Are you an outlier? That is the one question that you should be asking yourself if you plan on raising any type of investment from venture capital for your startup. One of the painful things that startup founders go through when trying to raise investment for their startups is the disappointment they get when talking to venture capital. A lot of times they're completely shocked by the standards that VC has. And this is where I want to talk about this question are you an outlier? I'm going to explain to you how venture capital works. And I'm going to put you in the mindset of VCs like Ben Horowitz and Mark Andreessen of A16Z. Before we continue, my name is Ed Kang. I'm a seven-time funding founder with two exits. That's just a fancy way of saying I failed a bunch of times for your benefit. Because I like to use videos like this and my entire YouTube channel to help early-stage founders, especially if you're raising pre-seed or seed funding, avoid some of the catastrophic mistakes that I've made. Not to say you're not going to make mistakes, but I'm going to try and minimize the heartache and the damage because this journey is hard enough as it is. I'm also the chief strategy officer for startups.com. I work with a team that has raised over $700 million for startups. I do investor relations every day and I advise hundreds of startups and thousands of startups have come through our online accelerated program. Speaking of startups.com, if you're joining us from there, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate you being part of the community. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's jump into this video. First, let's define what an outlier is. An outlier is something or someone that is set apart from the group, stands out. Outliers are different by an order of magnitude. That's how much they stick out. And a lot of founders tell me, Ed, I am an outlier. I'm definitely an outlier. I'm different from everybody else. And when I tell them I could throw a rock in my accelerator program and hit at least a dozen other founders trying to solve the same problem, they look at me incredulously and they say, no, 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 I am different. And I get it. A lot of times your perspective might make you think that you're an outlier and you just might be an outlier relative to your context. This is what it might look like. You are an outlier from this circle. You are outside the circle. That's you. Well, then in that case, you are an outlier. That is correct. But now let's get into the mind of a venture capitalist because a lot of founders don't know how to empathize or put themselves in the shoes of VC. I mentioned Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz of A16Z just as the celebrities to illustrate my point. In this case, Ben Horowitz and Mark Andreessen of A16Z, they look at so many deals and they look at pedigree deals. So I'm going to draw the number of deals they look at. They look at thousands of deals every year, or at least their organization does. Same with Y Combinator and other investors like Sequoia, you name it. They look at all deals of all shapes and sizes all year long. And so this is what you end up with. Are you an outlier now? If the size of the circle is so big, you basically get gobbled up and you are on the inside of the circle. You are no longer an outlier. And that's why venture capital will pass you by because venture capital is based on the ability to recognize outliers. They need massive asymmetric upside in terms of an ROI, the returns that they're going to get for themselves and their limited partners, the ones who invested in their funds. They need to find those outliers in the entire group as they scour literally the world for deals. So now what happens is you have to push yourself outside of that circle. You need to become an even more of an outside outlier to stand apart from the rest. This is what this looks like. There you are and you are outside the big circle. That requires you to do a lot of work for you to be an exceptional founder. And everybody has the possibility to do this if you're willing to put in the work. And you don't even have to have everything lined up in your favor. You just have to be willing to be outside of the big circle where everybody is. Everybody's trying to raise money. There's a lot of noise in there. And everybody pretty much looks the same. Now, I want you to think about what might happen in this scenario as the A16Zs and the Y Combinators gobble up all the premium deals. There is a mass competition, and that's where you have an opportunity to work with the venture capitalists that might not have access to the same amount of deal flow as an A16Z. And here's what happens. If you talk to a VC that has a smaller pool of deal flow and you're that outlier, you really stand apart for them. You may not totally be the outlier that everybody's looking for in A16Z, but you're really going to stand out for the smaller investor. And that's the reason you don't want to give up because there are so many VCs, so many investors that make a killing and do very well by looking at everything else that is not within the investment portfolios of an A16Z, Sequoia, or a Y Combinator. In fact, there are investors out there that actually focus on the companies that are rejected by Y Combinator because they know there are great opportunities in there if you're willing to look and search. So if you're a founder who's willing to put in the work and get to those investors, well, good things 
things can happen. But I want to take you on a journey, and I want you to understand what it means to actually run an investment fund, run a venture capital firm. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to be all the investors out there, and you're going to raise a fund. So let's say you went to your 10 buddies, and they all put in $10 million a piece. And that would give you a fund of $100 million. It looks something like this. Here's the math. 10 investors at $10 million a piece, that's $100 million. Now let's say you want to invest in early stage startups. So what you're going to do is you are going to write $1 million checks to 100 early stage startups, and that is going to take care of your $100 million fund. These are just round numbers. It doesn't really work like this because there are management fees and all sorts of different dynamics that go into running a fund. But just for numbers sake, here's what you've got. You've got $1 million into 100 companies to make up your $100 million fund. Therefore, you have to get really good at picking companies. That's the number one trait of a great VC. They know how to pick companies. And to get to those 100 companies where you've written those million dollar checks, you probably looked at at least 1,000 pitch decks, probably more. Now, here's a dose of reality. 90% of your startups are going to fail. Even if you're really good at picking, it's just the reality. Statistically speaking, 90% of startups are going to fail. So immediately, if I have 90 startups that have failed and I have lost $1 million a piece, well, that means I have lost right out of the gate $90 million. Here you go. This is my loss right here, $90 million down the tube. But that's okay, because I'm a venture capitalist. I understand how this works. Venture capitalists make money by being wrong 90% of the time, but the ones that are right, guess what? They really make you the money. But think about this for just one moment. Let's say all the startups that have not failed give you a 10x return on your money, 10x. So you put $1 million in, and you get out $10 million from each of those companies. That is a fantastic investment. If I went to an investor and said, I can 10x your money, they would invest in me all day long. But there's one problem. If I get 10 companies giving me 10x at $10 million a piece, that's $100 million. But I've lost $90 million. So what do I have here? I've got $100 million made. I am flat in terms of my fund. It is a 0% return. And investors are not going to trust me with the next round I'm not going to have a good reputation in Silicon Valley. I'm not a good VC. So the unit economics do not work the same in venture capital as other types of investments. And a lot of founders go into VC meetings or they approach VC with that mindset, with the linear mindset of a 10x return is really great, which is fantastic. I keep saying this over and over again, but it doesn't work for venture capital. Now let's continue for a moment and look at the 100 companies I've invested in. Statistically speaking, roughly 2% will become unicorns. So I have two unicorns in my portfolio. I'm going to write them down right now. What is a unicorn? A unicorn is a company that reaches about $100 million in revenue and is worth $1 billion pre-IPO. Now let's say I went in and put my $1 million in there and I got 20% of the company right out of the gate. I was the earliest investor and I got 20%. It was a great opportunity for me, a great discount on the stock because I took the majority of the risk being the first check-in. Now, you might think, well, 20% of a billion-dollar company, that's $200 million. And if the math worked that way, then absolutely fantastic. That's true. But the math doesn't work that way. Because remember, let's say I got in at 20% at pre-seed or seed round. But then A round, B round, C round, and all the rounds above dilute me down. And eventually, I'm most likely going to be in single digits in terms of revenue, maybe 5%, maybe 3%. Now, that's a great return if you've only invested $1 million. But remember, I'm working with a $90 million loss already. So let's say I'm an amazing negotiator, and I got 20% of the company up front. And by the end of it, at IPO, I own 10% of each company. So if I got two unicorns times 10% of the company each, that is going to give me a $200 million exit when they go IPO for a billion dollars a piece. Here's what that looks like. And that's going to be fantastic. But now let's get back to reality. I have raised $100 million and I made $200 million. So I've returned $200 million. I've doubled everybody's money. And again, in any type of investment, if you double your money, that is absolutely fantastic. If I go buy a stock and it doubles, I am over the moon tickled pink. That's amazing. But not for VC. Remember, you need an asymmetric upside. I've seen investors turn a few hundred thousand dollars into a billion dollar return because they are betting on the outlier. So the bigger the stakes and the more pressure there is, the more the VC will look for an outlier. And if you are building a startup that looks like 
like every other startup where you do not have something exceptional, like exceptional traction or founder market fit, or you've got something, a secret sauce that's just going to blow everybody out of the water by an order of magnitude or more, then you are not the outlier that VCs need. Now, let me just be straightforward. You could build a fantastic company. There are founders out there that go and build $10 million companies, $20 million companies. And guess what? Venture capital will not touch them. And you know what's even funny about that? I know founders that have built $20 million companies that don't want to talk to venture capital at all. They're happy with $20 million and they're growing, let's say, 20 to 30% a year. That's a perfect opportunity for private equity. Private equity doesn't need the same type of numbers that venture capital does. And this is another mistake founders make. They don't understand the difference between private equity, venture capital, and all the other types of investors that are out there. So there are a few ways that we can go from here. If you're the type of founder and you truly believe that you are building an outlier, something that is so different by an order of magnitude, you've got such a contrarian idea and you're proving it, go for it. Go for the A16Zs. Go work with the Y Combinators and the Sequoias. Go knock it out of the park. More power to you. But some of you need to recognize that you're not working on something or you're not going to build a startup you might not even want to that goes for VC funding. Maybe all you have to do is get a bunch of angels together, get smaller checks, build a really solid business, put a couple million dollars in your pocket every single year, and you're going to be just fine. You don't need to be this massive outlier. You can be an outlier just enough for the smaller types of investors. But don't set yourself up for disappointment and start acting accordingly to the size of investment that you can raise. The biggest mistake that you can do is go to an investor that needs to absolutely crush it, go 10x, and you pitch small ball. You're painting on a small canvas. But the other mistake that you can do is go to an investor that needs to pitch small ball, needs a small canvas. They're just looking for maybe a dividend payment every single year, and you pitch this massive vision that we're going to use AI, we're going to transform, we're going to create sentient robots and all that stuff. They're not going to be interested. They're going to be so intimidated. So you have to match yourself with the right investor, but always be the right level of outlier and understand where you stand with everybody else. I hope this has been helpful. I'm going to put some videos on the screen that you can watch next. I'd love to know your comments about this. You know me. I'm always trying to give everybody encouragement, but with a dose of reality. Thanks for tuning into this one. I'll see you in the next video.